guys, it's me Phoenix, Dragon 83. Today I'm going to be reading Golden Phoenix. It's an SBI fanfiction. It's really good. I'm only going to read chapter 1 right now. So let's get it on. I'm not going to read the summary because it's too much. Chapter 1, The Angel of Death. In the beginning, the earth was dark. The lands was swallowed by endless nights. Monsters roamed freely to kill, ravage any spark of life. There was no hope, no love, only death and destruction. And from all that death and all that destruction, two gods were given life from their creations. The first one was neither a man nor a monster, only an entity that created destruction, blood, forces of balance and equality. He sought for a world without rulers. He sought for a world where monsters' life forms have been sniffing out and manipulate could coexist. Perhaps not in harmony, but in equal standing with another. So the fight could be fair. So the first so the world's first anarchist was born, the blood god. And from his shadows a sister twin bloomed from him. Her hair was dark at the age of night, with eyes red as the blood her brother spilled at her feet. Her name was Death, the goddess of death. With her brother rose, the humans from the caves hastily built shacks. She quickly got to work evening out the planing field. Day in and day out, as the higher gods worked to bring the sun into existence, she slaughtered every monster beast that dared step near her. However, given her immune, immune power, power, she was alone. Not enough to cut down millions of mobs without her brother, who at the time was already waging his first war. Shortly so she asked the higher gods, Please may I help her, an angel to stand by my side and fight with me. The gods obliged. Death watched as, a f as he floated down creased from the sky, swooping over her head, pulling flips and spins with his newly created wings. The raven haired goddess watched with her gentle smiles, and the angel sought to impress her with his new born eagerness. Eventually, she held out her hands, waited patiently for the man to land. Death took the time to notice exactly what type of wings their creators had made for him. Four wings, dark as the night that entrusted over the planet for so long, and then thing to work alongside someone like her due to her pigment as a species. Reputation aside, that thought her angel was beautiful. His hair shone a golden halo of blonde, his eyes were as blue as newly lit skies. Though it appeared the angel thought her to be more lovely. With flushed cheeks, the man tipped his hat at her and spoke passionately. <coughs> My goddess, I'm the most honored to be at your side. My life is yours. Did they give you a name, my angel? That asked gently, placing the tip of her nail against the nail under his chin to lift his head up. His blue eyes peered into hers. For the first time in her short life, she saw no fear in the eyes of men. Of this man, her angel. Vilza, my goddess. Well, I must say, Vilza, that's much better name. Much better name than when I was given. Death chuckled, gently tipping his hat. Vilza laughed a bit nervously with her in awe that I laughed with such a squint as the rest of her. He fixed his hat and stood as tall as he could, palm of my hand. My goddess, you deserve to have a name fair and fitting of your wonder. What do you not change? Why do you not change it? Was I asked. That part at that. Never once in her life did she think that even possibility. And yet this man, Philza, not even ten minutes old, was already showing her idea she never dared dreamed of. I'm. Quite embarrassed to say I never thought of that about it. 
I'm afraid I wouldn't know what to pick. Do you have suggestions? Those would beat red. And Death had to contain herself from laughing at her cute expression. At his cute, uh, his rather cute expression. He quickly composed himself some. Y you want me? To me? Who else would I ask? You're my first and only friend. My brother is more preoccupied with wrecking havoc and spilling blood to pay attention to me. But I get a fool to do so, pardon my, me if I am being too blunt. Any being God or not would have not to be brain dead and not pay attention to you, Thilsa said passionately. This time, death was the one blushing. You are a kind man, and I already tell that we will get along quite well. Nine now, any thoughts of my name? That doesn't roll off the tongue, you know. The angel sat there for a, for a long time, deep in thought. But this was an important answer for his new found life. The gods wait patiently as they respond. And finally, he did. How about Christian? The angel said sheepishly. And the gods felt her heart sore for the first time. Yes, yes, I think Christian will do her quite nicely. But for my sake and yours, only you can call me that for now. Yes, my goddess. Death raised an eye about him and felt once again when the red face. Yes, Christian. She smiled, and the second time in her life, on best to her, on best to either of them, but it would be the second of millions of times Philza would make her smile. Together the two fought fiercely as one another side for a hundred years, till people grew strong enough to fight them. And while no humans were able to see the cause of death, they could see Phil. The humans would claim the angel as their leader, and many great and glorious battles they spent for many generations, they made it to the end. However, instead of bringing his entire army into the dangers of the end, he proclaimed that he would go alone. Phil performed. Felsa promised that once again, Dragon had slain, there would be a new era of peace with a new generation of people. And while the people that Felsa and Christian cared for so dearly could not understand what the last part of the statement meant, they wished him tearfully express a honorable fight with his uh, triumphant victory. He would climb to the staircase to overlook the portal. The country of people suddenly filled with a scene of dread that told him he was not to be back for a while. A boy, no older than fifteen, looked at him with sad eyes. He's too young, too young to be here. I promise all of you that one day I will return to this land to lead into a cool age of peace. For now, take care of one another. Live your lives and band together, but be kind to those who are different from you. After all, just because someone looks to be a monster, doesn't mean that they are one. I feel so reached up of his stem with his eyes stretched, overstretched, he fell into the portal. Time seems to be freeze as he, he falls into the end. His body goes cold, cold quickly and ice forms against his wings, making a flight impossible. His teeth chatter against the out puffs of cold air into the back of this. But while his body freezes, his mind races. He feels time break apart with that. He begins to shape and color as the reactor around him. He begins to see people happily chatting along with themselves. The sun shines high in the sky and the world appears to be in peace. In the background, the so can see a magnificent castle built on top of the side of a large mountain. At the very top, the angel spots a patch of fallen snow upon the ground. At the base of the mountain is a kingdom, a town busting with daily life. Children dance in town squares. Phil faintly can hear the angry shouting of Breaker, who appears to have burned his hand against the oven. The fancy shifts and blurry images appears before him. Portrait hanging in a large hall filled with tall windows that met in a golden sunlight. 
as the tent of the cathedral drank, betrayed making a golden hair man with a crown on top of his head. His large dark wings were extended outwards as a fiery wrap on the shoulders of two children. One of the boys appeared to be of long pink hair, while the other has curly brown hair with pink roots barely peeking out. The crown rests upon top both of their heads. Suddenly Phil scratches another figure in the painting, sitting in the arms of a king and a small infant. Maybe six or seven months old. His hair is golden blonde, just like his. Wait, what is this? And then his feet hit the ground, and time starts once more. Vilza, Phil, can you hear me? He hears her whispering to him as she swims back she swims back to her consciences. His eyes open and immediately at the sound of her voice. He sits up primarily. Black spots previously in his vision, though almost immediately falls back down his head swimming. She laughs unfortunately and gently helps him to his feet. As vision clears, he takes in sight of his goddess. It appeared that she had shrunk down her human form, a form she could really take due to her strain and power on her powers. Her long black hair flowed down to her knees, twined into a colored locks, with silver black roses with purple tips and two braids with purple ribbons entwined, and then wrapped around her head creating the appearance of a crown. She wore a long black dress with flowing sleeves. The dress was shortless, but there was shimmering nuts that trailed a purple necklace. It was equated by gold, and by body of dress, golden heart was pressed in the center. Vilsa felt his own heart shudder in his chest. She looked magnificent. Christian beamed at him. The hands clasped together in excitement. Did you see my did you see my angel? Did you see them? I saw a portrait in a large hall. It was me, I think. There were three boys in the painting with me. Christian not excited, her hands fluttering as she spoke. The, the gods showed you a glimpse of our future. Your future. Our future. You have proven them that you're worthy. Just by answering this portal. And they decided to bless you. Then they want they want me to, to be a father. I my goodness, my life is yours, yours alone. I mean, I'm about to stay at your side for as long as you have me. This sort of can't possibly be mine. I never, I, I can never look. The man put his tongue with his tongue cut off. You can already tell his face from the shades of red. Gentle, cold hands come to press against his cheeks. The God spoke softly. My love, I know you would never betray me that way. These children will be ours, perhaps not in a traditional way, given the fact that I cannot have children, but they will still be ours. Vizzo looks at his gods with love. In this world, I have no idea what you meant by that. and threw her hand back and laughed, laughed. And Phil found her himself chuckling too. She put a gentle kiss against his cheek and said, It doesn't make sense now, but it will in due time. Once you defeat the dragon, everything will be different from the world. You once knew. Make me proud, Phil. Defeat the beast and free this world. Well, that is God's fate from Pew. Phil sat there in silence for a long time. Everything will be different. The man's mouth was fixed to sad. Surely over his golden hair, he read himself checking off his equipment one last time. And then out to face the beast. He think to himself above us? As we were merely ants waiting to be washed under the boot. Maybe they think us beneath them while they fly so high in the sky. Send me out, master. I will destroy them. It's too early. We must be patient, Angel. It's slow slaying our guardian as we speak. Unspeakable tragedy, no doubt. I 
can do it, XC. I can kill them right now. Leave me, leave me to dream, dreamers, and I'll make them. I'll make a quick. I'll make a quick work of it. Be patient, child. The Chichibukane is not ready yet, and you are far too eager. What must I do, master? We must wait for our destruction. For one in one thousand years, from the Golden Phoenix and the Star World, then once the boy has matured enough, then the world will begin.